So that's me, um, and I am getting ready to do this Road to Guitar Mastery. But before I can do that, I have to warm up. It's Road to Guitar Mastery. It's the best freaking show in the world. Greetings and welcome to Day 28 of Road to Guitar Mastery. The ongoing show where I attempt to master the guitar by breaking it down into its most fundamental pieces. So word came down from our corporate sponsors today and they said, No more tournaments for the mastery marathons. Instead, you will now do that thing where the computer gradually increases the tempo with each iteration. This way you can train your speed more like sprinting while simultaneously working harder on accuracy at the slower tempo. I says, what do they know? Oh well, I guess I'll give it a shot. For each line, I set the max tempo at my goal for the day. Then the program starts at 50% speed and moves up 2% every time the measure repeats until I'm chilling at 100% my goal speed. I ended up repping each line about five times in this fashion. And to my surprise, it looks like those suit stooges were right. I definitely felt like I got more out of my practice this go around. Here were my final results for the Mastery Marathon. For the rest of this episode, I wanted to talk about the relative minor to the major shapes we've been working on. In basic music theory, you learn that you can find the relative minor scale of a major scale by starting on the sixth scale degree of the major scale. For instance, we've been building these shapes in G major, so if you started the scale on the sixth, you are now playing in E minor, which is the relative minor to G major. Now normal theory would have you turn the E into the first scale degree of the minor scale and have you renumber all the other scale degrees accordingly. However, for our purposes here, that would mean having to think about each spot of the pattern as two different scale degrees. To combat this, I'm going to stick to the major scale degrees and pay attention to how the major scale is influenced by the changes in the minor scale. So in minor, I would think of the 1-4-5 chord progression as the 6 chord, the 2 chord, and the 3 chord respectively. Now the 3 chord is minor in the major scale, and if we wanted to use that as a stronger 5 chord in minor, we would make the 3 chord major. Because the 3 chord is composed of the scale degrees 3, 5, and 7, we need to raise the 5th scale degree, or the 3rd of the 3 chord, to make that major. Bottom line is by raising our 5th scale degree in our major pattern, you create the harmonic minor scale. So now, we can take these same patterns we've been working on and just raise all the 5s by one fret. In the same fashion, you can find that the blue note, or the sharp 4 in the minor scale, that gives it a bluesy sound is actually the raised 2 in our major patterns. So for a quick recap, start from the 6th scale degree if you want a minor sound, raise all the 5s if you want a harmonic minor sound, and finally throw in a raised 2 for the blues sound. I hope this wasn't too confusing, as I will continue to pursue obscure ways of looking at these shapes for total mastery. Thanks for tuning in, and I will catch you all on the next episode. Take care, everyone.